and um, that science facility is floating a little bit aimlessly, but it'd be interesting to see if he decides to land that and put an add-on on. Meantime, I'm trying to get a gauge for what Lomo is doing, and I mean, it looks to me more like he's just scrambling to stay afloat here. He's got another engineering bay going up, and I'm not sure why that is. I don't see um, infantry upgrades as becoming an issue at all, um, and he hasn't lost his floating one. More dropships from Upmagic going to just clear the remainder of Lomo's forces off of that plateau, and... Um, with that high ground position, it's going to be really difficult for Lomo to make any significant progress up there. So, I think if Upmagic decided to, he would just be able to macro and slowly squeeze Lomo out of this. Um, he'll He's c controlling more of the map and more of the resources, so eventually, if they just even trade units one for one slowly over the course of the rest of the game, then Upmagic should be able to just still come out of it with an army at the end and then just roll Lomo over. Um, and I suppose here's the point where um, I start to understand why people have been calling the game interesting as the physics lab is going up for up magic and starports are being massed. His third, fourth, and fifth are going up. But I'm beginning to wonder whether this is actually a game that was all that interesting, or just kind of a foregone conclusion and a bit of a a bit of a stomping. Because for the last several minutes, Up Magic's been pretty heavily in the lead. Lomo, however, I guess has gotten enough resources that he's going to be able to compete on battle cruisers. Though he's only got his third starport going up, so. I think Upmagic is still going to have the economy and the production capacity, definitely the production capacity with his 6th, 7th, and 8th starports going up, to mass up battle cruisers a lot faster than Lomo will be able to. So I think there's going to be one big battle cruiser battle, and I'm wondering if any of these players had the foresight to research EMP for their science vessels and whether they're going to try for that science vessel EMP on the group of battle cruisers to stop um, any Yamato gun attacks from going off. But um, in any case, I think that Upmagic is going to have the sheer weight of numbers behind his battle cruisers, and this is a good this is a good move by Upmagic. He's not waiting for the battle cruisers to uh, to seal the deal. He's keeping the pressure on Lomo, and Granted, he's going to lose that um, that attack force in basically one big boom from the, that mass of siege tanks on the bridge, but um, in the worst case, that's just freeing up Sai, and um, Lomo still hasn't at any point in the game really pushed across those central bridges, so I don't see without a dropship force that he doesn't seem to have, or... The, um, the air force that he's looking to get with the battle cruisers, I don't see how Lomo is going to really be able to take the fight to Upmagic at any point during this game. And that's why I think the battle cruisers are really a little bit superfluous, and it's a f bit of a foregone conclusion that um, this game is now, barring any colossal blunder, it's pretty firmly in Upmagic's hands at this point. Um, Upmagic is able to just keep the pressure on and is looking to pick off Lomo's expansions one by one. Um, so masses of starports going up, not all of them are producing at the moment, and I don't know if that's because some battle cruisers have just finished and are massing someplace on the map that I can't see them, or whether it's um, just because they're, um, even, with, even with the six bases that Magic has, um, that might not be enough to just consistently pump battle cruisers out of eight starports. Um, I have to admit, this is not one of the um, this is not the kind of macro situation I typically face in my games, and I don't know exactly what the um, number of number of functionally mining bases you need to produce that many battle cruisers in a hurry are. Um, so Lomo is going to be able to clear out that attacking force of Upmagics, but he's lost just about every SCV at that expansion, and his economy is really hurting. Um, 
And again, um, if Lomo doesn't manage to affect some kind of damage or slow up magic down, then there's no way he's going to be able to win because he hasn't brought the fight to um, to up magic since that really early game struggle for um, the control of up magic's natural. So, yeah, I'm, I guess, going to contest this this claim that this was a really interesting game. I think, I think that there wasn't anything all that particularly interesting to be seen, um, unless you unless you treat the sort of technical clinic that Up Magic is putting on about grabbing small advantages and then just milking them for all they're worth. But I mean. There hasn't been any any phenomenal micromanagement um, tricks that are usually the sort of hallmarks of games that um, that get recommended or really offbeat and wacky strategies. Um, what I will say for Up Magic is that he's played a really good game where he's exerted a lot of continuous pressure that Lomo has not apparently been able to handle, and um, Lomo has been forced into some really passive play, but. Um, Yeah, I, I don't I don't think that just the fact of seeing battle cruisers in a Terran versus Terran game is something that makes that makes it automatically interesting to watch. Um, Lomo, I think he might have thought he was a bit more clever than he was with the fa the um, the tech to battle cruisers, but seeing that Up Magic's got the larger fleet, I have to imagine that this um, this battle cruiser battle is going to um, to be the one that ends it. Um, those turrets just melting really quickly, and here we go. It doesn't look like the battle cruisers have um, Yamatos for either player, but um, yeah, definitely the weight of numbers favoring um, favoring up magic here and Lomo GGs. Um, yeah, a very good game by up magic. Nothing really impressive from Lomo in that game, in my opinion. It was just very very passive and. To a certain degree, I think I'm Magic crossing those central bridges in Destination and just holding the um, holding that central position really sort of forced Lomo into playing this passively. But I don't. It hardly feels to me that Lomo was playing for the win. He was just not doing anything. Um, maybe he thought that the battle cruisers would equalize it, but. Um, not when you're not when you're running on less of an economy and less production, which seemed to have really just been the story of that game. Um, well, GG, and um, I hope you enjoyed watching that. And um, yeah, if you think I'm wrong and that was really fantastically interesting, just give me a shout in the comments and let me know why you thought that was um, a great game. Or you know, if you agree, feel free to leave a comment too. Um, always open to comments and feedbacks, um, feedback on any of my commentaries, so yeah, don't hesitate, drop me a line, and um, yeah, let's discuss what we thought about that one. At any rate, I'm hoping to get um, Bisu versus Hwasen from SKT versus STX done pretty soon, and that should be the next video that I put out. Thanks very much for watching, and have a good day!